What's really good, YouTube? I'm Louis Gusto, and it's been about two years since we created the greatest Chicago Chinatown internet video of all time. So you know we're back to make a sequel. Make sure you finesse that like button because I'm standing in the middle of traffic just to create this. Good morning, Chinatown. Every time we come in here, it's so hard to choose because I swear I like everything here. But we picked. There is no better place to start your day in Chicago's Chinatown than Chu Quan Bakery, the OG Chinese bakery in the Windy City. Been here since 1986. The subject of countless documentaries, YouTube videos. We've covered them many times on the channel. And this morning we are back with a nice selection of breakfast items. Of course, we got the chashu bao, all three types of mooncakes. We got the mochi ball, OG egg tart, and a ham and egg bun. All these things are so great to eat first thing in the morning. We're gonna start with the ham and egg bun. <laughs> this may be your very favorite thing to eat in the morning. It has been almost two years since I've had this ham and egg bun. It's even better than I remember. So, so good. If I could have that every single morning with coffee, mm. The barbecue pork bun. We were watching the uh, documentary on how they're made last night, just to kind of get us in the spirit. Look at this. Look how beautiful. Let's go. Mm. It's such a premium meat delivery system. This bun is the right amount of fluff. Think Kirby from Nintendo. The pork. Oh, it's, it's juicy, it's savory, it's sweet. We watched all the ingredients in that documentary last night. One of my favorite foods here in Chinatown, for sure. So we got all three types of their mooncake. Uh, we don't know which one is which, but there's a red bean, there's a lotus, and a winter melon. I'll go ahead and try whatever this might be. Mm. I'm not the best with picking out flavors, but I think this might be red bean. <laughs> all right, I really wanted to try the egg tart. Now this is the OG egg tart. I've never had an egg tart until now. They do make a pastéis de nata as well, so we're gonna have to try that next time. Cheers. Mm. Okay. It's so interesting because the what is this the 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 pastry part? What is it called? The crust. The crust of this is really flaky. And then the, the filling, it, yeah, I mean, it, it tastes just like an egg. You know, sometimes things are named like egg or some, something, but it might not taste like it. This tastes like biting into, it's kind of like a flan texture, but very egg forward, as the food critic in me would say. All right, I got one more thing to try before I let Narissa start eating. Shout out to Narissa for holding the camera super steady. This is the mochi ball. I must squeeze first. Mm. Now that is what you call squeezable mochi. Gotta try the barbecue pork bun. The pillowy soft bread. Delicious. I love how yellow is. It's like bright and sunny. I kind of feel like we often say that the weather is overcast here, but uh, this would make up for it on any overcast day. Oh, that's so cool. I really don't know which ones these are going to be. Either the winter melon or the lotus. We're going to try it. Hmm. So TBH, I'm not sure what flavor this is. I'm usually really good at this, but actually I think it's because we've never tried the winter melon one. I don't want to guess wrong. We always get mooncakes at Chuquan. It is one of our traditions. All right. I mean, what can you say? Chuquan, that is a five diamond award winner. Next time we got to try something totally different. There's so much to choose from. Plus you can grab cakes and breads and dim sum even. I'm in a great mood right now. I am ready to explore Chinatown once again. Let's go.
We are back at the Chinese American Museum of Chicago. It's been about two years preserving the culture of Chicago's Chinatown. This is my jam right here, coming in, getting a little food, a little bit of culture, reading up on some history, lots of reading to do. So if you'll excuse me, Chinese American Museum of Chicago is a must visit here in Chicago's Chinatown. Admission is completely free, though you can leave a donation and they've got a gift shop. So there are a couple of different ways that you can support the museum. There are two floors of exhibits. On the second floor is the permanent exhibit, which shows stories of Chicago's Chinatown. There's a documentary you can watch. But on the first floor, they have a new exhibit that we've never seen before, which is the history of Chinese cuisine in America. It was really great to read up on all these Chinese restaurants that have existed in the Windy City since about the 1900s, early 1900s. It's really, really cool, especially for a history buff such as myself to see original furniture and menus, photos. Remember, the original Chicago Chinatown was downtown in the Loop. So it's cool to see photos of that as well as learn about the names of the restaurants and what they served all throughout the decades. Pretty dope, got me hungry, so I think we're gonna go and get some more food. Now we saw a toy store from across the street. It's brand new. I saw some cute plushies in the window, so I have to go see them. Maybe we'll find one for Rowdy. Chinatown is one of our favorite neighborhoods of Chicago. It's got everything. It's walkable. It's got phenomenal restaurants, cultural landmarks, so many things to do. It is the blueprint for a great urban neighborhood, something that all Chicago neighborhoods should aspire to. It's been a couple of years since we really explored the neighborhood like we do when we make a neighborhood guide. And it's amazing to see how much Chinatown has bounced back in the last couple of years. We are seeing less vacant storefronts, a lot more new businesses, toy stores, salons, new restaurants, a lot of activity today. It is cold, but the people are coming out to Chicago's Chinatown. <clears throat> they must have watched the guide. To your left, you can see the Chinatown branch of the Chicago Public Library. Lots of books. On your right is the Chinatown stop of the CTA Red Line. One of the most common comments we got on our very first Chinatown food tour was, where is the hidden food court? I can't find it anywhere. Well, that's why it's a hidden gem. Anyway, we are back. We have no idea what's in this underground food court today, but I can tell you that we're super hyped to find out. So why don't we go along, come with me, I'll be your guide, won't steer you wrong. Let's go inside and find some food. <laughs> about to gather a bunch of veggies, maybe some protein for a spicy stir fry. We're at Memoir down here in the underground food court. I'm thinking bok choy, some mushrooms. We'll see. Mm -hmm. <laughs> ah. Narissa and I decided to try something completely new. It's our wild card restaurant of the day. This is Memoir Spicy Pot where we went to. Basically, they give you a bowl and you can fill it up with various vegetables and proteins. They had a lot to choose from. Let's take a look at what we got here. There's some bok choy, some water chestnuts, two types of mushrooms, a little bit of beef, cilantro, and I think peanuts. Bean sprouts in there. My mouth is just watering as I describe this for you. They cook this with a special chili oil and lots of love. It has really good reviews, we found out after the fact. Once you put all your ingredients in the bowl, then you hand it back to them and you can choose either the soup or the spicy stir fry. We went with the spicy stir fry because that is what they're especially known for. I hope it's not too spicy, but we'll find out. If my face turns red, just adjust the brightness. Got some bok choy in there, little bit of beef, bean sprout. Comes also with a side of white rice. Mm. 
This is really great. It's actually not that spicy. I would say maybe like a seven out of 10 on, on my scale. Your scale may vary. I'm glad that we tried something new. Earlier we went to Chupan. Obviously that's a must visit. That is a pillar, an institution in the neighborhood. But it's also nice to try. There's so many restaurants to choose from in Chinatown. So I encourage you when you come to the neighborhood, just be adventurous. Just pick something at random, pick a few different foods that maybe you've never eaten before and it's gonna be a fun time. Like we're genuinely having fun right now. We had no idea we were gonna order this today. I'm enjoying it. My tongue is like starting to tingle a little bit. I think that's a good sign. <laughs> what an adventure. You never know what you're gonna find down in the underground food court. We are now at Hello Jasmine, which could be the name of a tea house or a sitcom about a former exotic dancer who's starting a family. I got the grapefruit lychee tea and there's a Chicago flag behind my bird. It's all decked out for winter. Pretty dope. Normally we get boba tea on the channel, but we want to switch it up a little bit. Just try it. There's like a hundred teas to choose from, so we can't always get the same thing. That's right. shake our boba teas when we're at like uni uni because of all the separated colors and the different um, parts of the drinks but these ones are very beautiful and they're already kind of mixed I don't know does, is, does this warrant shaking <laughs> gently stirring it this time we love hello Jasmine because their tea is such high quality and you can tell these have actual fruit pieces too mine has peach and Lewis's has grapefruit. <laughs> we had some spicy hot pot, and now it's time to cool it down with some tea. Look at those lychee jelly. They're so cute and little. Mm. We just had that spicy stir fry with the chili oil and the woody mushroom flavors with some beef. This is like the opposite of all of those flavors. It's fruity and playful and light and so delicious. I had the spicy, now I gotta cool it down with the tea. The grapefruit and lychee flavors go pretty well together. Actually, I mostly taste the grapefruit so far, but uh, I like their mascot, the little flying bird. There's a lot of lychee jelly in here. And at Hello Jasmine, you can, you don't have to get tea only. They have uh, shakes and smoothies and milk teas and lots of snacks. So there's a lot to choose from and it's a chill vibe. Just a Taiwanese style boba shop right on Clark Street. So just gotta walk underneath the L tracks to get here. You can drive if you want to, I guess. There's, Lord knows there's plenty of parking around here. <laughs> Look, this is the bonus round on Tapper. <laughs> so we've been hanging out in Chicago's Chinatown all day. We have the most Chicago Chinatown videos on YouTube, a couple of food tours, another neighborhood guide. We also did one in Manhattan's Chinatown. Make sure you check that out. If you are new to the channel, subscribe. Help us donation to grow. We are celebrating the Lunar New Year. It is the year of the rabbit. So Bugs Bunny, Easter Bunny, even Bad Bunny, Roger Rabbit, Peter Rabbit, and the Velveteen Rabbit. We're coming off the year of the tiger. The only famous tiger I can think of is Tony. If I were one of these companies, I would definitely start playing up the Lunar New Year. This whole area of Chinatown really feels the closest to an ideal urban neighborhood in Chicago because it's walkable, there's lots of businesses and restaurants, and there's activity with people, not just cars and trucks passing you on all sides. All right, we can't spend a day in Chinatown without going to Ping Tom Park. It's just a short walk from here, and we did visit a couple of years ago. It's a beautiful Riverside Park, but let me not play it up too much. I'll just show you through the lens of my camera. Uh, look, there's a Divi station, so you could get, you could uh, come to Ping Tom Park, grab a Divi. That's usually what people do at Divi stations. 
Now there are two parks in Chinatown. Well, one is more of a playground. It is actually the Sun Yat-sen playground and it's close to the expressway so it's not the best experience. Ping Tom Park is the one you wanna to come to in Chinatown. It is by far one of the coolest parks in the whole city. It actually was an old rail yard next to the river and now it's a lovely majestic Riverside Park. Not to be confused with Riverside Park in Manhattan. It was literally a rail yard, guys. I'm not, I'm not joking about this. Check that out. Like there's still trains running through here. So imagine back in the days, you just had railroad workers and shacks and the spikes that they drive in and maybe old broken down cars and wheels and spare parts. But now it's a beautiful park. There are four pillars behind me. Even though the Orange Line doesn't stop in Chinatown, the tracks run right along here, which is a weird thing about public transit in Chicago. You'll ride the train and you'll be like, it's been a while since we last stopped. Unlike New York City where there's like a stop every, you know, minute or so. <laughs> anyway, let's check out the park. Also, I think it's really important that we get the word out about Pink Tom Park because there are so many people in Chinatown Square and almost nobody here in the park right now. It's kind of baffling. I, I honestly think that they don't realize there's a beautiful park right here. So. Shh, hidden gem. This is a very special pagoda because this is where we did the thumbnail for our very first Chinatown Chicago food tour. I think I was like this and then we put the food all around me. It ended up being a great thumbnail because that video has 100,000 views, at least at this point when I'm, maybe by the time you're watching this, it'll be at 3 million. Yeah, it really makes you wonder, like why aren't there more people out here? I guess a little bit on the colder side, but it's not that cold. <laughs> I. I think it's just kind of a hidden secret. In the summertime, you could take the water taxi from downtown Chicago all the way to here. It stops right here. It's always crazy to me when travel vloggers are like, oh, it's like traveling to another part of the world without leaving my city. No, it's not. You're still in the same city, you're just in an ethnic neighborhood. If you really want to travel to another part of the world, actually travel to another part of the world. When I'm in Chinatown, I never zone out and then look around and feel like I'm in China. I'm, I'm still in Chicago. It's not that different. People still are speaking English, dressing in Under Armour clothing for whatever reason. Speaking of supporting the channel, I got to talk to you about our Patreon. It is the best way to support what we're doing and I don't want to break into a whole like skip this ad type of speech, but hey, we're trying to grow here. We want to do bigger and better things, represent the city of Chicago all around the world, but we can only do that with the support of Gusto Nation. Pink Tom is a slice of tranquility amongst all the hustle and bustle of the city because when you're walking around the city, there can be a lot of noise, trucks and cars, trains and birds, people and the echoes of dreams once got to do a fit check right so i'm wearing the red heavyweight hoodie from the gu pop-up in soho i got some top man jeans and of course the jordan 11 concords hey. it is the year of the rabbit and i'm feeling happy i also have big ears so i do have that in common with rabbits <laughs> <laughs> it's your year too then <laughs> I'm gonna do a closer one. Oh, oh where'd okay, you go? Okay. I was gonna do the other side. <laughs> okay. Chicago has some of the most legendary street names like Michigan Avenue, State Street, and Cermak Road. But ladies and gentlemen, I now present to you the best named street in all of the Windy City, Louis Parkway. Here on Louis Parkway in Chinatown, there is a row of homes. This is the residential part of the neighborhood. And all of these homes are pretty much designed based on the same template but there is one at 1908 Louis Parkway that kind of got the whole Animal Crossing treatment. Looks like they went into the office and had Tom Nook come in overnight and like really spruce it up. This is my usual menu. 
menu shot because there's a QR code right here to scan. Excited because I want to eat everything. One of everything, please. I made a decision and our appetizer is wood ear mushrooms. We've gotten these a few times before. There's one location, like a fast, casual location that QXY has called Jow. We've had it there, and we've also had it here once. I was really excited to get this again because this is like pickled mushrooms. It may sound strange at first, but they're so good. Lewis has tasked me with preparing the sauces to dip our beautiful QXY dumplings in. And I think I'm up for the challenge. First up, soy sauce. I won't overflow the little dishes because they're too cute. Now I don't know if I've ever come up with the perfect ratio. Maybe I'll have to start counting how long I, <laughs> I hold the pour. Regardless, this combination is 100% the most amazing combination that you could put for a dumpling. Soy sauce, vinegar, and the third thing, chili oil. I hope I don't drip this. <laughs> always solid. If you want like a little bit of spice, chili oil, that's it. It will never change the flavor of what you're eating. That's why I love it. Really most any other hot sauce that's not mild in flavor, it just changes what the food tastes like, which is not bad, but I think when you want the food to taste the same, but with a little kick, chili oil is it. <laughs> Almost two years ago, we became the very first YouTubers to profile QXY dumplings in Chinatown, widely considered to be the best spot to grab soup dumplings in all of Chicago. Today, Narissa and I got three orders. We got the shrimp, pork, and leek. We got the scallop, pork, and lotus, and the beef and truffle. The preferred way for us to get our soup dumplings is steamed, but you can also get them boiled or fried. I don't know why you'd get them boiled. It's really either steamed or fried. That, to me, those are the only two valid options. But when they come out steaming, the clock is ticking, you know? You wanna eat them hot. Gonna get the shrimp, pork, and leek. This is probably the number one dumpling here. Cheers to Chinatown. That is a FedEx delivery of flavor. This is a new one. This is uh, one of the ones that was recommended to us today. It is scallop pork and lotus. Never imagined we'd be trying one like this. I didn't, I was like, do scallop and pork go together? Not really two flavors I ever imagined in a dumpling. But I'm gonna try it now. That's a really strong scallop flavor. I've had scallops before where they had more of a mild, meaty, buttery flavor. That one is really like scallopy, if that makes sense. Um, I like it. That, that is a good one. And now the beef and truffle. Now, QXY does have a fast food style restaurant in the loop called Jiao and Cha. And they make soup dumplings, but they're much smaller. And we had the beef and truffle the first time we went. And every single other time we went, they were always sold out. So, reunited and it feels so good. I got a comment the other day on our London top 10 foods and somebody was complaining that I was calling the beef wellington beefy. How else would you describe beef? That dumpling is beefy and truffly, just like the name suggests, beef and truffle. The last time that we ate soup dumplings on the channel was in New York City. Remember when we went to uh, Namwa Tea Parlor and got the soup dumplings? They were pretty good, but these from QXY here in Chicago, take the cake, take the dumpling. Oh my God. 
Their slogan here is the legend of the dumplings begins here. And I think that's a great premise for a movie. You know, somebody goes on a quest to find the best soup dumplings and all the, uh, the little trolls keep telling him the wrong places to go to, throw him off the trail. And then finally he comes here and gets all these amazing dumplings. Spielberg, sign me up. So sometimes this is like a tricky art. You have to be able to slowly and gently lift it off the basket so that it doesn't rip and then the broth spills everywhere. Salud! How many dips? Is that three dips? Three dips and a flip on the dumplings? Three dips and a flip. <laughs> the one that I just ate was the scallop pork and lotus dumpling and wow that was a really cool like surprising flavor if you like seafood you would really love this one and if you don't like seafood you won't like it <laughs> it's the last dumpling of the evening going going gone no oh got it soup dumplings are almost the perfect food they're bite-sized they're super meaty and tender Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Soup dumplings are almost the perfect food. They're bite-sized, savory and meaty, but they don't exactly photograph too well. All I gotta say is with soup dumplings, don't judge a book by its cover. It may look ugly, but inside that little folded piece of dough is all the answers to life. And once again, QXY brings it. What I like about it is they have a lot to choose from. They even have vegetarian options. We love the woodier salad because they're like pickled mushrooms. They also have some good specialty tea, but we wanted to cool it on the drinks because that's where we're headed next for some specialty drinks. So follow me guys. Can I bring one of them home for Rowdy? <laughs> he will burst that thing. We heard about this place. We knew it would be super dope to film for the channel. It's a little bit hidden, so follow me. It's happy hour here in Chinatown, so Narissa and I came to the neighborhood's only speakeasy, Nine Bar. We actually recently found out about this place, and when we did, we were like, we have to go there, especially since we're about to film our 2023 Chinatown neighborhood tour. So there are a couple of things you gotta do when you go to a speakeasy. Number one, you gotta figure out how to get in. Mission accomplished. Now step two, you order your drinks. And this is the Paradise Lost. We had a Brazilian rum in here, mango, passion fruit, ube, and Thai coconut milk that's been clarified. That's why you could see right through it. It's got a nice big ice cube in there, a slice of pineapple. Cheers to supporting your local Chinatown. So good. This drink is a lot like me. A little bit tropical, a little bit elegant, and quite cold. It may be the year of the rabbit, but I'm drinking the paper dragon. This is like a passion fruit, tequila, spicy margarita type of a cocktail. Let's go. I'm enjoying the pink and blue theme. It's time for round two here at Nine Bar. This is an acai draft. Nice and cold. Cheers. We're looking for that sponsorship. You know, we're not so much into the nightlife, but we do enjoy speakeasies and chill bars just like this one. Now we're standing in front of Chinatown's branch of the City of Chicago Fire Department. This firehouse was, by the way, built in 1936. Pretty historic if you ask me. That was another day for the history books here in Chicago's Chinatown. Huge shout out to Wafik, who's a big friend of the channel. We will see you next time. You know we're gonna do more Chicago Chinatown videos, so keep rocking with the channel, and we'll keep rocking with you, Chicago. Peace.